We have traveled all over East Africa, finding hardworking farmers who are making a good life on their shambas. We want to learn from them, turn their farms into good businesses, and help them increase their profits. Join us and see how our farmers benefit from the experts' advice and share their experiences as we shape up their shambas. <laughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are visiting a Shamba in Elgeo, Maraquet County home of the world's greatest long-distance runners. And just like the long-distance runners, farming here has taken the long road to success. That's not all. The runners here have medals, and so do our farmers. Well, let's go meet the farmers. We are visiting Abraham Kiprotich and his wife Priscilla. They have five children, with just one still at home. Their farm is in Elgeo, Maraquet County, near the busy town of Eldoret. Well, here we are. Let's find out about those medals. And Abraham, I understand you're a prize-winning farmer. Yes, I am. So how did that happen? It happened when I participated in the program, yes. organized by Radio Citizen. At the end of the program in February, I emerged as the best overall farmer. Oh. And I received an award of Kenya Shilling 6,000 to purchase a cow. Oh, wow. that's awesome. But I was very happy because my husband one. Aha. <laughs> so when he wins, he also wins. Yes. yes. Okay, can we see this cow and the rest of your shambles? Yeah, let's welcome, let's go. All right, let's okay. go. Let's go. <laughs> so, the farmers grow maize and potatoes. 70 local chickens. Three tomatoes. A brand new greenhouse. Ah, and here is a cow bought to the prize money. A little shy, but looks like she's giving a lot of milk. Very impressive, Shamba. How can we help you? I need some assistance in feeds and uh, simple ways on how to control diseases in the dairy. And uh, I think I've seen the greenhouse and uh, it has not yet started working. So if assisted to acquire seeds and uh, some bit of technical advice, things will be well. Oh, good. Yeah. Priscilla? Our potatoes is not bad, but only challenges of which we face is marketing. Uh, the next problem is about the uh, chicken. Right. Taking care of feeding. Mm -hmm. uh, I lack a lot of skill in that side. So I know it's quite a list, but we'll see what we can do. Let's pitch the tent and get ready to work. So, just like the runners of El Geo Maracoet, Priscilla and Abraham's Shamba is growing from strength to strength. Yes, and we have so many other things we'd like to help them with. We have an expert for the chickens, another for the potatoes. And one for the dairy cows too. First, I'm going to take Abraham to his new greenhouse. He wants advice on growing healthy tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And when Tony you're done, I'm going to take Priscilla and Abraham and show them the many benefits of conservation agriculture. Well, see you later, Naomi. OK, see ya. Abraham's new greenhouse has never been planted. Peter from Kenya Highland Seeds has come to take a look. Ah, uh, Peter. Now, what's your general observation of his greenhouse? It's very hot inside here. Yeah. And that's because with the maize planted all the way around the greenhouse, we've got no airflow coming through the greenhouse. Uh. You can come with another crop such as potatoes after the maize so that you can get the airflow through the greenhouse. Yes. If there is not enough airflow in the greenhouse, the plants will suffer from slow growths, yields will be lower, and pests are encouraged. What have you got for him today? We've got uh, some tomato seedlings here. We as Royal Seed work very closely with a Dutch company called Rijkswan. Rijkswan is one of the leading greenhouse seed houses in the world. They have breeders that breed specifically for greenhouse production. Uh -huh. So they breed a lot of tomatoes mm. and they breed a lot of uh, capsicums specifically for greenhouses. Now, Peter, what's the importance of using seedlings instead of seeds? These are one month old. So you've already saved yourself one month of Ooh, preparing yeah. your own seeds. The biggest advantage is when you buy 100 seedlings, you get 100 seedlings. If you buy 100 seeds and you do your own uh, nursery and you get some failures, then you might only end up with 80 or even mm. 70. Mm. So the big advantage is 
you will get what you pay for. And also these have been professionally raised, so they're very strong. Also, you'll notice they're all the same size, so that when you plant these out in your beds here, you will get a very even growth coming yes. all together, which is what you need in a greenhouse. Very nice. It sounds good, doesn't it? It's a special lover. Oh, good, good. Now, tell me, what are the most common mistakes that farmers make when they are buying seedlings? You must go to a reputable seedling raiser, okay? Because if you buy from somebody who is not a professional, you can get very poor root development. Mm -hmm. The roots are critical to the plant. And you can also get a plant that arrives with you and it's diseased or it's already been attacked by pests. Peter, as you came in, you saw the farmer is quite busy trying to install a drip irrigation. What can you comment about that? These plants are very sensitive, particularly in a greenhouse, which is very hot. So how will I know that water is sufficient for that day? The best way to check that you've got enough water in your greenhouse is with your hands. If the soil is ending up sticking to your mm -hmm. hand, yeah then you know you've got too much too water. Much if it's a very hot day like today, you'll have to apply more water. Timing is important. Try to uh, put water in the early morning so that during the day the plants can take the water yes. up. And then I would say put water in the early afternoon so the plants can take water up in the afternoon before they go into the nighttime. Yes. So we don't want the plants going into nighttime too wet because they're not, they're not actually growing when it's dark. Mm. They need the sunlight to grow. Yes. We have talked of these seedlings as the best quality. What could be the expected yield? From my initial trials on this, we were, we were yielding anywhere between 12 and 15 kilos per plant over a, over a period of nine months of harvesting. Yeah, wonderful. So on a square yeah. meter, you'll be looking at yielding anywhere between 25 and 30 kilos. Is that good for That's you? Very good. So do you want to start transplanting them? I, I'll try. Okay. Expecting miracles from this. <laughs> Abraham, let's get ready for planting here. So when you plant, it's good to make the plant stand as upright as possible. The importance is to get a good planting base, ensuring that we are always planting right by the drip line so that the maximum effect of drip irrigation is achieved. Why should we plant in a zigzag manner? Because then you get the maximum aeration between plants. Well, we'll not be faced by waste of water because this drip and this one will be boring water that goes to waste. No, you won't be wasting any water because it's very important that mm. you keep all of your soil moist. Yes. Okay, the most important is obviously around the plant mm. and where the root zone is because these roots will become big like this. Okay, up to about here. So even this water will form what we call an onion in irrigation. Okay, so the water will go everywhere. The roots from each plant on either side will be able to benefit from this dripper yes, here. Yes. Abraham needs to make sure he has enough water for his greenhouse. He has a borehole on his land. So we are helping him connect his pump to the greenhouse tank. All set. We'll be back in a few months to see how Abraham does with the tomatoes. Next, Philip from FAO has come to tell us about conservation agriculture and a better way to plant crops. So Philip, yes. what is conservation agriculture? Conservation agriculture is a farming method mm -hmm. that ensures that the farmer does not disturb the whole piece of his land, mm -hmm. except where he is going to insert the seed, and also at the same time yes. maintains his soil covered right. so that it's not exposed to agents of erosion mm -hmm. and also to minimize on water uptake by right. the heat. Farmers usually use a jembe to plant smaller plots, but it's better to use a jab planter. For bigger fields, a farmer can use a direct seeder pulled by oxen. These two machines mean you don't need to plow or dig the soil, and this makes the soil healthier. We'll start with uh, what the farmer always have, mm -hmm. a normal hand hoe. Mm -hmm. For you to plant using a hand hoe, you require five people. Mm -hmm. The first person will do the digging or making of the planting holes. The second person will insert the fertilizer. The third person will mix the fertilizer with the soil 
while the fourth person will insert the seed and the fifth person will come covering the seed with the soil. Mm -hmm. But uh, with advancement with technologies, we have a hard held jab planter, jab, just like an injection, mm -hmm. because it has one seed hopper and a fertilizer hopper mm -hmm. and has the seed channel and also the fertilizer mm -hmm. channel. The jab planter is very easy to use. All Priscilla has to do is jab the planter into the ground and squeeze the handles. This makes a hole and puts the fertilizer and seed into the hole. The seed does not touch the fertilizer and all the farmer has to do is get the spacing right. So you are always assured of a, almost 100% germination. Mm -hmm. Yes. This one is more economical for the farmer to use. Yes, it is. And it can save time. The direct seeder does the same work as a jab planter, but it's much quicker and can plant more seeds. So it is ideal for bigger fields. Yeah, it has several parts. Mm -hmm. It has the seed hopper, mm -hmm. and the seed hopper has a pair of seed plates. These plates make sure that the seeds come out one at a time into the planting hole, just above the fertilizer, which comes out of the fertilizer hopper. The seeding disc gets the spacing right, so you don't have to do any measuring between the seeds. But does the direct seeder save time planting? In 40 minutes, you are able to plant a whole acre. Mm -hmm. So as compared to when you hire like eight people to do the planting the whole day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you cut on costs mm -hmm. and also the time you spend while working in your farm. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, you are assured that your seed and the right amount of fertilizer have been applied. Is it expensive? It's uh, around 100,000. But oh. normally many farmers come together, form a group mm -hmm. and buy one, mm -hmm. which can be able to serve within a season, not less than 25 mm -hmm. farmers. It is very cheap. Very cheap. And, uh, and even the tractor. Normally it takes three days mm -hmm. to planting yeah. the shampoo, but now using this one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it takes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The cedar's coulter or cutting wheel at the front cuts through any mulch or crop residues and the topsoil. Next, a reaper tine then opens a furrow. And at the back of the dispersal wheel, puts a seed and fertilizer in the furrow without touching each other. All in one go. So, we've learned about growing greenhouse tomatoes so that you can get a good, good bumper harvest in the future. And in the field, getting more yield using the direct seeder. But you know what? In this chamber, Abraham and Priscilla are the real experts. Well, that's right. And that is why we've asked them to give us their best number one tip in farming. I would wish to advise my fellow dairy farmers to establish their own protein farms to supplement in feeding dairy cows. We have planted three lucerne. We use three kilos of three lucerne and one kilo of dairy meal. It gives us quality and quantity milk in, in our dairy cows. Wow, sounds great. Okay, after the break. If you'd like to receive all our Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word all together with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just the leaflet for this Shamba, SMS the name of the farmer together with your name and address to 30606. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are here with Abraham and Priscilla. We take a look at the chickens, the cows, and the potatoes. That's quite a list, Tony. So let's get going. See All right, later. see you later. Clement from Unga has come to see Priscilla's 70 birds. Good morning, Priscilla. Good morning, Steve. Clement. Yes. Ah, good to see you. Good to see you, Tony. So, Priscilla, what kind of chickens do you keep? Local chickens. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why do you keep the chickens? I had several children in high school, one in university. I needed a lot of money to pay school fees for my children. 
And how has the egg production I, been? Egg production was not bad, though most of them lay eggs in the bush. And it's a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot of work. <laughs> okay. Clement, yes. how can you help her? I've seen you have only one f uh, drinker and uh, one, feeder. one feeder. You need at least two for the number of birds you have. Okay. I've observed there is no laying nest in the house. So you need a good laying nest and you make sure it is a bit darker because the chicken uh, likes laying in a bit darker areas. Okay. And if possible, you close the, the inlet where the, the birds are entering okay. so that they cannot be laying outside there in the bush. Chickens like to lay in dark laying nests and the best place for this is in their house. How are you feeding the birds? I feed them with sukuma, yes. uh, maize, yes. and they survive on their own. Okay. How about the young ones? The young ones, I give them unga. Which kind of unga? For maize. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as you know, the chicks are, are young, they need to grow. So they need a good quality feed so that they can grow faster and also be resistant to diseases. So we have a feed in unga called fugo chick and duckling mash, which you feed uh, starting from day old up to eight weeks. This feed uh, is well balanced to ensure that there is faster growth, there is uh, disease resistance, and also strong bone to the growing chicks. It also has uh, some uh, coccidia stud, which prevent uh, the bird from getting sick earlier on. Also, after uh, the birds are eight weeks, you start using a feed called Fugo Growers Mash. This one you feed until four months of age, where you can now start to free range your birds. The growers has also nutrients to enable faster growth and also early laying period for the chicken. Once the birds are at the laying stage, you can use our feed called Fugo Layers Mash, which you can supplement either maize or whatever which, which is available at the farm. Now, if Priscilla follows the instructions and feeds her chickens the way you've instructed, what will the results be? If you feed the birds very well, the chicks won't die early, and then they will lay early, and also the egg production will, will improve. So you, the profits will also improve. How many chickens free range can I keep it inside here? Yeah. Okay, with a measurement of uh, 15 by 20 feet, yeah, yeah. it can accommodate up to 100 Kenyanji chicken. Because they will be uh, going outside and coming in the evening, that will be enough space for 100 birds. Yes. And if about if I keep them fully inside, okay. how well, many will I If keep? you want to fully uh, keep them enclosed, you will require a space of two square feet per bird. Birds that live inside need two square feet each. Kienyeji or local breed chickens need one and a half square foot each. So, if she wants to lock her chickens in all the time, she needs a bigger house. Local breed chickens can eat half fugo layer complete meal and half maize or other grains. And you still get lots of eggs. So now, what are you going to do with all this useful information? In How fact, I am yeah, a local assistant chief. Oh, you are? Therefore, uh -huh. I will then my residents so that they may come out from property. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. get money for the Algerian school fees uh -huh. and even for their own needs. Wow. Because Priscilla is an assistant chief, all of our farmers will soon make more money from their chickens. <coughs> now, let's see what Naomi can do for Abraham and his cows. Abraham bought a good cow with his prize money and has a healthy looking heart. But is there anything Abraham should worry about? Let's find out. Uh, Abraham, uh, how many cows do you have? I have five cows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I milk three. And uh, what is the production per animal? Per animal, an average of 10, 12 per day. Per month now, that goes to? Around 900 kilos. Mm -hmm. What I deliver at the shilling plant is only 750 kilos. That's per month. OK, 26, 27,000 per month. Yes. Yeah, yeah, for the three cows, is that good? Yeah. That is good. What do you feed? I feed with simple feeds, chopped nebia grass, and sometimes mist overs, and mm -hmm. kikuyu grass, mixed with uh, fodder straps. I have three Lusan in plant in my farm. And do you give minerals? Yes, dairy lake and uh, stock lake. A cow that gives you 20 liters is supposed to consume 2.5 kgs of proteins. Yeah. Most of these feeds are protein feeds from the farm. Maybe what we require is minerals. You give 200 grams per day according to production. So as the animal increases, you also increase the supplementation because 
we lose those minerals as we milk. So you need to replace. So getting the minerals right will keep the milk production high. But if Abraham's feed is even a little moldy, his cows could get aflatoxin poisoning. Once you store feeds, they tend to develop molds. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is where now the aflatoxins are in. Once molds are developed in the feeds that you're feeding your animal, they will actually reduce the production of your animals. Mm -hmm. So you might be feeding your animal with every good kind of feed, but they are locked up by the toxins. Right. That shows our cows are sick and we are not knowing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At high levels also, they are also harmful to human beings because we get it in the milk. Mm -hmm. and that is where it will bring a lot of problems. Some people feed their cows using supplements, but at the end of the day, they complain they are not seeing any production increase. Yeah. Can that be the case? Yeah, that is the case. Right. Yeah. So what kind of farm are we at this point? Then? We have a solution. We have a T5X, which is a mycotoxin binder. Mm -hmm. So what it does, it binds aflatoxins and uh, other mycotoxins. Yes. What it does also, our T5X stimulates the liver to activate natural detoxifiers. So in that way, you will also have uh, prevented mycotoxins from getting released into your animals. So right. it cures and it prevents. Ah, okay. So if I may ask you, mm -hmm. the level of a farmer like me uses, uh, who feeds using simple feeds from the farm. Yes. What is the rate of aflatoxins in the feed? If you're storing properly, then they can be there at moderate levels. Mm -hmm. So you can give maybe 50 grams per animal per day, and that is good for a farm like this. Mm -hmm. Cooper's T5X cures and protects all your livestock against aflatoxin poisoning. It will take the aflatoxin out of the cow's milk, so your family will also be healthier. T5X is easy to use. Just mix 50 grams or a half a glass with a feed per animal per day. While Abraham starts to treat his cattle, I have found Priscilla. We have just got the soil test results from Soil Cares. The soil has pH of 4, which is very acidic. This means potatoes, grains, vegetables or beans will not grow well. Priscilla needs to lime her soil to get the pH up to 6, which is good for most crops. She needs to apply lime two weeks before planting and dig it into the soil before planting. She will need to add lime every season until the pH is right. To get her soil health right, she needs to add compost. But she should not add compost when she adds lime. Instead, she should add compost at planting and then more as the crop grows. This way, her soil will hold more water and stop diseases. It's time for our final expert. Bieta from Technoserve is a potato market expert. Kenya imports most of the potatoes we eat, so there is a lot of demand. But how do farmers get the best price? They need to store the potatoes until the price is right. And they can do this in a cheap cold store made of charcoal, which is very cold inside. Abraham and Priscilla belong to the group that owns this store. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, quick, someone, do something. Ah. The store has open walls of mesh wire packed with charcoal. The charcoal is kept wet from water in a tank. The water evaporates from the charcoal and the inside of the store is kept very cold. It's not only cold, it's also very dark. Abraham! Perfect to store potatoes. But I can't find the farmers. Where are they? Oh. Ah, there they are. Oh, I'm feeling cold. Yeah, it is, it Let's is. get out of the sun. <laughs> if I stay in here much longer, I'm going to become a vegetable myself. Bieta, is it usually this cold? It gets up to four degrees Celsius wow. inside the store. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what's the advantage of having a store like this one? When you harvest potato, they start sprouting in about a week or two. And that means when you don't have somewhere to keep them, you're just desperate to sell until you take any price in the market. So a store like this will enable farmers to keep their potato even up to four, three months. In that period, prices will have hiked. For example, we have farmers who kept potatoes here in July. Today we are in October. In July, prices were as, as low as 500 shillings per bag or 50 kg bag. And uh, today, as we talk, prices are 2,000 shillings per bag. So you can see in a span of three months, prices have increased by 1,500 shillings per bag. The store also enables farmers to sell their potatoes together. It's easier to sell 1,000 bags at once than to sell 
100 bags because you have bargaining power as farmers. Mm -hmm. yes. So they can manage to eliminate the middleman. They can become price, price uh, makers more than price takers. Price makers, not price takers. I like that. The store is not expensive to build and the farmers have all contributed something to build and maintain it. I understand you do have a cooperative. Yes. What exactly does it do? The farmers came together to form a, a limited liability company. Already that company has 52 registered members and shareholders. And uh, we have more than a thousand farmers who are accessing market through this company called Mosoport Cultural Company. The advantage is that the farmers who are members here can sell their potato through here and they can access dividends at the end of the year. We're also looking at other vegetables in the long run. Can they bulk their carrots here? Can they bulk their cabbage here? Most of those perishables, because when you harvest most vegetables, then you're only desperate to sell and you don't get best prices. So we are looking at farmers selling most of their commodities through the store. Have you seen the advantage of this kind of a store and also being part of a cooperative? I've seen a lot because since they started this store, our children went to school and they were never chased by the school because of fees. But wait, that's not all. The, the farmers have a long-term vision. They want to put up an agrovet where they can store chemicals because I know potato farming will require fertilizer, for example, so that when a farmer requires fertilizer and they have potato in the store, they can be given fertilizer and the money can be deducted from the, the proceeds of the, the potatoes when they sell. That's good news. And you know what? It's warming me up. I'm feeling now warmer than I was before. And thank you very much. Are you feeling warmer too? I'm always feeling more. <laughs> <laughs> A great idea for all farmers to get great prizes. Abraham and Priscilla, we've come to the end of our visit here. Did you enjoy the Shamba Shepa, Abraham? I learned a lot of things. I was very happy. Yes. I have got a lot of skill. Right. And I'm very happy because I have achieved my goal of keeping chicken. So would you like us to visit you again? It has to be very soon. <laughs> we need to see the progress oh. done so far. But you can promise you are going to find changes? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. You too can make a change by getting in touch with us, by calling our call center or using our SMS service. Farmers, do your chicken have scaly legs? I know how you can fix that problem. See, my chicken are healthy. I joined iShamba and I receive free farming advice every week. If you want to join, send the word join to the number 21606 and they'll call you back. Shamba Shape Up is also online. Visit us at shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You can also visit Shamba Shape Up's Facebook page where you can enter great competitions and also get involved in great, great discussions. Shamba Shape Up is also on Twitter at Shamba Shepa.